Good afternoon, everybody. This is Adam Shoemaker again, Director of Education with the Gilmore Keyboard Festival. I'm in my basement studio. I've been touring around Kalamazoo trying to find powerful computers. Um, but I am here with the amazing pianist, Ching Young Hu, who has been uh, teaching you over the past couple of days. She is a touring artist. Um, she is the founder of the Philadelphia Young Pianist Academy, and she does so many other entrepreneurial endeavors, I couldn't even begin to list them all. Um, but she has a very wonderful presentation about stage charisma, which I don't think we've ever presented at KeysFest. I think it's a great topic. Um, so we really look forward to seeing what she has to say and hearing. Um, so without further ado, here is Ching Young Hu. Thank you, Adam, and uh, hi, everyone. I've been really enjoying teaching all the uh, wonderful kids in uh, yesterday and also this morning. And uh, and it's just such a wonderful, uh, it's such a wonderful way to share with the community. And I really want to thank um, thank Pierre for inviting me, and thank Adam, and uh, you know, thank Leslie and everybody who's working on this festival and doing a really fantastic job um, running it as seamlessly as possible uh, in the midst of, you know, all the technology and, you know, <laughs> with a pandemic. And as Adam said, I, um, besides being a concert pianist um, touring the world before the pandemic, I was mostly spending maybe every month I would be home maybe half of the time, sometimes going on for tours longer, especially in Asia. And, uh, but besides that, I uh, founded the organization called uh, Philadelphia Young Pianists Academy, and the initial would be PYPA, and used to be a festival that happens in the summertime. And because the, of the pandemic, we actually started running virtual masterclasses and interview and, uh, <laughs> and workshops and it's been ongoing and it just has been so wonderful to see you know all the in innovative ideas that comes just because of pandemic and we are all at home and we can actually do a lot of things during this time and i have also noticed that with my own own practicing that because there is not as much um the pressure of a deadline i am actually practicing a little bit differently during the pandemic. And why I started to get into this uh, was because I, I understand how uh, challenging it is to put all the moving parts together for a festival like this. And so I really want to congratulate the, the presenter and for everybody um, that's working on this project. Uh, and uh, thank you for that. And I've never been to Kalamazoo, but I have a sense from just, you know, listening to all the wonderful kids playing, there's a tremendous love for, for music and uh, the teachers, the parents are supporting, and that's just such a beautiful thing to see. And uh, I'm just really happy to be involved with the Kids Fest. And um, I just want to uh, tell you a bit that today's workshop, I actually prepared especially for the students. And uh, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, a little bit about how, how I got into music and what made me want to spend the rest of my life being a pianist. And then I will uh, go on to discussing with you how, what is a, a storytelling and what does it mean by storytelling on the piano? And then I will be sharing with you just a bit about, you know, how to engage with your audience. Basically, like you have a story to tell, and then what do you do with the story? So that's the topic of today's uh, workshop. And I just want to say that I really will need all your help uh, to, uh, to participate because I have many questions for you. And I hope that you will be like sort of a discussion, a uh, list of like a workshop, but more like sort of a participation and discussion. Uh, so I would really appreciate to have as many comments as possible. Okay. And uh, first, uh, to get into how I started with music, it's actually, um, you know, I, uh, I came from a non-musical family and I was born in Taipei in Taiwan. 
And my mom just, you know, she loves uh, classical music so much, but she wasn't able to uh, learn the piano. And so, you know, she actually learned typewriting instead. In those times, I like, her time, it was difficult to, to even get like a upright piano. So she really instilled this kind of passion and love for classical music for me and my sister uh, since we were very young. And she would never imagine that her daughter would one day become a concert pianist. This was not in the plan at all. And so we started out just like, you know, normal kids. We, you know, learned with Yamaha schools on keyboards in, you know, classes that had many kids together. And eventually uh, got into a special music program when I was nine years old. And how it started why, and why I wanted to become a concert pianist, uh, I have to say that it was because of one concert. And that concert, I still remember so clearly to this day. I was 10 years old at the time, and my mom bought tickets for us to hear Rostrovovich, the cellist, perform. And I remember it was at the you know Taipei National Concert Hall, and to have Rostropovich perform, it was a very very important uh, event. So we all went to hear hear him. But during that concert, I noticed that I wasn't as interested in the famous cellists. I was actually so mesmerized by the accompanist. And I remember the accompanist was a Japanese pianist, and it was just the way, maybe the way his fingers were moving, and just the occasion of you know the atmosphere in the, in the concert hall. It was just such a mesmerizing experience for me. So I went out of the concert hall and I told my mom that you know look, I want to be a concert pianist, and I want to be a concert pianist that is able to perform on the stage around the world. So that was my wish. It was very clear. I want to be a traveling pianist performing. And, you know, so they say, okay, that's, you know, support your dream. And I remember so clear to this day, a concert changed my life. And that's when I was 10 years old, I decided I wanted to become a concert pianist. And going back, going back two more years, when I was 12 years old, I had a piano teacher who just returned to uh, return back to Taiwan, and she studied in Vienna at the Vienna Conservatory. And she could speak perfect fluent German and French, and she knew a little bit of Russian. And Russian music for me at the time was like so foreign and it was so exotic. And I was 12 years old and she said, you know, Qingyuan, you should watch Russian films. <laughs> you should read Russian literature because, you know, she was talking about Scriabin. And Scriabin for a 12 year old, is almost like drinking red wine <laughs> or coffee. And so I was like, oh, that's, this is so exciting. So I would actually went on to watch a lot of Russian films. It's all black and white. And I have no idea if it made any sense, but I really enjoy those. And I, I remember I was reading Dostoevsky, Crime and Punishment, and in Chinese translation, can you imagine how difficult that would be to a 12 year old? But I read it. You know, not only one time, but uh, many, many times, five times through. And that left such a strong impression for me. Again, I told my parents, I would like to study in Russia. And I had a very specific teacher in mind who was Normov, and I wanted to study at the Moscow Conservatory. And my parents said, we cannot send you alone to Russia. And you don't speak the language, and we nobody will be with you. So how about how about America? <laughs> because we were taking some English lessons at the time. So we ended up. My sister and I arrived in America at the age of fourteen and sixteen. I'm the younger sister, 
And we arrived and I was very fortunate. I you know, auditioned and I was at the Julia Pre College from the start and, and began our life, lives together in America by ourselves while our parents uh, stay behind in Taiwan. So that's, you know, how everything uh, began. And, but the freedom of coming to America of, you know, having to believe in yourself at such a young age and being so involved in the music and so passionate about it and so focused that this is the goal I want for the rest of my life. I did not find it difficult to focus or, you know, to, to, to travel every single Saturday from Philadelphia to New York, whether it's snowing or it's, you know, it's summertime or it's wintertime. I did that every single Saturday, uh, this travel. And I think that time was extremely important um, for me because I had a lot of conversations between uh, me and the composers. And Chopin became so important during that time because one summer I was 15 and I was alone for two or three months and I was playing the Chopin ballad in G minor. And, you know, the music just, it just comforted me. And I remember I was practicing without the lights on and as I was playing the Chopin ballad, I felt that Chopin walked out of the piano and he hugged me. And that's the moment I feel like I, I connected so much with the music, maybe because I was by myself, I was lonely. And, but that, that moment also to this day, I remember it so clearly. That's the kind of moment you feel that you are, you, the music speaks to you and you are in one with the music that I felt at the time. I felt Chopin understood me. So that was, I was 15 years old. And in the meantime, uh, I was at Julia pre college. I did many, I started to do many competitions for young pianists. And there was this opportunity. Uh, that I, I participated in this concerto competition at Philadelphia Orchestra. So I had this opportunity to play with the Philadelphia Orchestra when I was 17 years old, playing the Greek. But that was not the most important thing. The most important thing actually happened after uh, the concert with the orchestra. Murray Pereira was in town and he was in Philadelphia to play uh, for Beethoven Concerto number four performances. And I remember, you know, I bought a student ticket. So I was sitting all the way in the amphitheater, all the way on the top um, at the Academy of Music. And it was my first time listening to Pariah playing. And it was just like unbelievable. The, the performance was so moving. It was so heavenly. I did not dare to move, to breathe. And, and the music spoke to me so much that I bought a ticket to the second day and then bought a ticket to the third day and finally listened to all four, four performances. And I was so mesmerized by, by his performance. I actually went backstage and thank goodness the guard still remember me from my previous performance there. He let me in and I saw Mr. Paraya and I said, Mr. Paraya, my name is Ching Yun and I study at the Julia Pre College with Herbert Stetson. I am working on Chopin Sonata number no. three and I would love to play uh, the sonata for you. <laughs> and, you know, he's such a nice and kind man. He said, okay, I can hear your Chopin Sonata number no. three. So that's how I got to play for um, Mr. Pereira for the first time. And going back forward, fast forward many, many years. And then um, the next time I met him was at the Rubinstein competition. And after the Rubinstein competition, which, you know, I won the prize there as well as the audience favorite prize, someone connected me to him where I had this great opportunity to go to London and play for him at his home. 
And I am sure he did not remember that many years ago, there was a young girl who came backstage and introduced herself and say, I want to play, play for you. So why I mentioned this stories was because, you know, the Drostrofovich uh, concert, as well as Moray Pariah's concert, it made such an impression for me that it confirmed again and again that I want to be a concert pianist and I want to perform. 